there are 7 billion people on this earth. A hell of a lot of people have access to the internet, and I'm sure you can find a good 100, at least a 100, that connects with you, that likes your personality. Hey honeys, it's your boy Jeremiah, back again with another video. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to start and grow your own YouTube channel from scratch. I recently hit my one year anniversary on YouTube, which I made a video on, which will be in the link above if you wanna check that out. And I think I've done pretty good in my first year. Just to think that there are people who have been doing YouTube for years and have failed to reach 100 subscribers. I think 650 plus subscribers is a fairly decent number. Of course, there are people with way more out there, but to think that 600 people are even interested enough in my face to subscribe to me is just completely insane. And I thought I'd share my tips with you guys on how to start and grow your own YouTube channel if that is something that you were looking to do. My tips will be split into three categories. There will be channel tips, there will be video tips, and there will be community tips. And each of these categories have to do with different aspects of YouTube, but by combining them all, there's absolute guaranteed growth involved. I think if you follow all of these tips, there is no way that you won't find subscribers. I'm not saying you're super successful, but you'll definitely find a group of people that like your videos and a group of people that are interested in what you have to bring to the table. Guaranteed. But before we get into this video, make sure you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that bell icon for notifications for when I post. I post every week, not every two weeks, not every three weeks, every seven days or less, honey. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So for the channel tips, the first tip I have is just do it. A lot of people want to start a YouTube channel, believe it or not. And a lot of people don't start a YouTube channel because they don't think they'll be popular enough or they don't think that they'll find a group of people that likes them. Can we just throw that state of mind out the window because there are 7 billion people on this earth. A hell of a lot of people have access to the internet and I'm sure you can find a good 100, at least a 100, that connects with you, that likes your personality. Think of the most hated YouTuber or the most annoying YouTuber. I'm sure you're thinking of somebody popular. They have a lot of people following them. So of course, if you think you're not popular enough or you're not interesting enough, there's somebody that'll find you interesting. There's somebody that'll find you popular. There's somebody that'll find you entertaining to watch or smart enough to give knowledge to the world that'll subscribe to you. YouTube is not only an entertainment platform at that. YouTube is used for education. YouTube is used for music. YouTube is used for comedy. There's something that you have to offer that nobody else is offering. You'll never know until you try, so just do it. The second tip is contrary to what a lot of other people say in their YouTube videos. That is, don't have a niche, but make videos around what you're passionate about. For me personally, I'm very passionate about fashion and music and my education. Um, I try to mix the three into this channel. I do a lot of reaction videos for my love of music. There's been some um, red carpet reviews that I've done for my love of fashion. And I have some college tip videos and videos on how to, you know, do better in college or things that you need for college. So I try to mix the three together. And of course, I have some other videos here and there. I like to do videos on things that I can talk about for a while because there's nothing worse than somebody talking on a topic that they know nothing about. So anything that I think I have something to offer in terms of knowledge or advice, I like to put it on this channel because you never know who can need it, who you never know who could be coming across your video one day. Even if initially the video doesn't do very well, somebody could come across your video a year later and I recommend it or two years later, nine years later. There are videos in my recommended that are almost 13 years old that I watch and I'm like, oh, I could have used this 13 years ago. Or, oh, this is very useful now, even though it was from 13 years ago. So put things out that you're passionate about. And it doesn't always have to be educational content, it can be entertainment content, it can be comedy content, it can be any kind of content that you want it to be. This tip is actually a very popular tip and it's very true. Be consistent. In my first time onto YouTube, I struggled to pass 100 subscribers. I think in October, I was actually able to pass 100 subscribers. And after October, my subscriber count has been going up like crazy. I'll insert a chart of my analytics here so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. When I reached 100 subscribers in October, I did a giveaway, and that giveaway solely gave me 20 followers, I would say. Wasn't too big of a number, but it was 20 followers, and I was like, hype over 20 followers. But then every day that week, I posted a video. In celebration of my 100 followers, I gave my subscribers seven videos that week. One video every day that week. And that is when my subscribers actually started going up super, super, super high. I think in those seven days that I posted those videos, I gained almost 50 to 60 subscribers in that week. And that was one of my biggest weeks on YouTube thus far. And I've been steadily growing because I've been keeping up with my promise of one video per week. 
But another tip is also one video per week is not enough. My first five months of YouTube, I was posting one video per week. Since I hit my 100 subscribers and that four week of videos, a video per day, seven videos a week, I have been posting consistently two to three videos per week. One video I don't think is enough if you wanna grow fast. I mean, if you wanna play the slow game, then there's a chance. But in a year, one video per week in a year, that's 50 videos. If people wanna go back and watch your videos or binge watch your videos, it's not enough. Two or three videos per week, so in a month, you'll have eight videos up already. You know, five or six months, you have almost 40 videos up. By a year, you should have almost 100, 200 videos up. The next tip is a tip I don't hear very often, but I think it's a great tip. This tip makes a subscriber or a potential subscriber's experience much better when they come to your channel. And that tip is to have channel art and a profile photo. A professional name or a name that is easy to understand or remember is also key. My name on YouTube is Jeremiah, and that's just it. All of my channel art matches. Even my profile photo, it's similar to my channel banner and my intro and my outro. I specifically made all of those alike so they can have a cohesive theme. And, and whenever someone visits my channel, it's all the same. There's no like friction between any of the design elements or anything like that. I intentionally made it like that for a better user experience. These things make it easier to click on your profile when you're doing something such as commenting on another person's video. If people like your photo, they'll click on you, see if you have any videos, or if you comment something funny and it's getting a lot of likes, people will click on your profile to see if you make, to see if you possibly make YouTube videos yourself and subscribe to you. It serves a double purpose. And in a world of smartphones, there should be no reason that you don't have a profile picture. Now, when it comes to your banner, it can be as simple as your name, what you do, what kind of videos you make, how often you make videos, or even your social media handles. It's all up in the air, but it's best to have something there so people can feel like your channel is complete. So lastly, when starting a YouTube channel, I will go through the YouTube settings and look under every single setting. There are a lot of settings on YouTube that are not turned on that need to be turned on to optimize your growth. Some of the settings that you can change from the top of my head are channel keywords, recommending your channel from other channels. There's also an option for uploading videos longer than 15 minutes. You definitely wanna go under the settings and look at every single option to know that you're getting the most out of your YouTube experience. Now that you've gotten all the channel stuff out of your way, it is now time to start making your videos. And my first tip is always introduce yourself. I say, hey honeys, it's your boy Jeremiah, back again with another video. Not only is that cemented into my subscribers' brains, but any new subscribers, any people who aren't subscribed to me, they know who I am. Although my name is on my channel, it's great to introduce yourself because people know who you are. You know, not everybody is coming from your channel. Not everybody is on the YouTube platform when they see your videos. So introducing yourself is a great way to get people to know who you are. My second tip is to always reference other videos, especially when making videos on topics that you already covered. I do this all the time and it is a great way to redirect traffic. For example, if I'm talking about back to school, then I'll say, oh, I also made a back to school video on the top best five apps for college students, which I'll link in the card above if you wanna check that out. And I actually did, so link in the card above if you actually wanna check it out. If somebody's looking for videos on a certain topic, if it's college life, if it's music, if it's entertainment, if it's comedy, then they'll click on that video because, you know, they're liking the content they're seeing now and possibly you have more knowledge to offer. So if you point out that video, they'll click on that video and now you got two views on two separate videos. So it's a win-win situation. My next tip is to find a video type that works and expand on it. Me personally, my first video that was clicking with my audience was my road trip videos. You know, a lot of the roadies were in my comments, a lot of the roadies subscribed to my channel for my road trip reactions. And I noticed that, and I noticed a lot of them commenting, react to this, react to this. So I expanded on that. And something that I thought would be a one-time thing, you know, I was reacting to this group called Road Trip, but a lot of people responded to it, a lot of people reacted well to it. I made it regular on my channel. I regularly entered it reactions of them on my channel when I didn't expect anything to come of it. The same goes for um, Blackpink. I thought Blackpink was gonna be a one-time thing and that was gonna be it, but I reacted to them once, I got a great response, and I actually loved the music, so I kept reacting to them. I'm periodically bringing them back into my channel. So if you see something that's working or if you see something that's tugging on the strings of a lot of people, continue to do that and expand on that. It doesn't have to be the same video, it doesn't have to be the same type of video, but try to center it around that. That doesn't have to be the only type of video that you make, but if you see that it's working, constantly weave it back into your channel. It doesn't have to be every video, every week, every day, but you know, once a week or once a month, 
try to weave it back into your channel just to get that traffic up and get that buzz going. And the last tip is to find one aspect of your video and try to perfect it. Whether that be video quality by buying a nice camera or buying some good lighting. Nowadays, all of the iPhones have great cameras. Turn your phone on Do Not Disturb so you don't get any notifications or any messages or anything like that while you're recording. It's very easy. Just swipe down if you got an iPhone X and hit the moon, or swipe up if you got any of the other iPhones and hit the moon. Do Not Disturb. You won't get any text. You won't get any calls. Anything like that you won't get while you're recording. Or you can invest in some good lighting if you don't have any windows nearby. Natural light is the best light, but artificial light is what I use. As you can tell, if I look up, you can see my light in my and my glasses, but I use artificial lighting for the most part. I personally use artificial light because I think it's much easier. I like to record very early in the morning or very late in the day. I don't record when the sunlight is at its peak. You can also invest in a camera. I personally use a Nikon D5300. I was blessed enough to be able to have this previously, so I didn't have to buy the camera. I'm just using the camera that I already had. If those two options for improving your video quality are too expensive, you can also try to go a route of improving your audio quality. I use a Rode VideoMic Go, which is perfect for the sit down and talk videos. I believe I paid maybe 50 or $60 for this microphone and it goes right on top of my camera and I think it picks up audio beautifully. I'm sure there are low end microphones around 30 or $40 that you can pick up just to make that audio on your video so much better. If those are not things that you want to invest in, you can also invest in editing platforms. When I first started my YouTube channel, I had Filmora Pro. I think I paid $55 for a lifetime subscription. Since then, I have moved on from Filmora and I've moved to Premiere Pro. Fortunately, through my school, I get Premiere Pro for free. But when I graduate from school next semester, I will definitely have to invest in a Premiere Pro subscription. So there's always a way that you can put more into your YouTube channel. Of course, there are stories of people who didn't put any money into YouTube and suddenly got popular and made money off of it. But a little bit of effort can go a long way. Of course, it is not 100% necessary, but I think it's a great tip to help your growth. Now, lastly are my community tips. And when I say community tips, I mean interaction with anybody on the YouTube space. My first tip is always, always, always interact with your subscribers. Every single comment I've ever had on this channel, I have responded to. Every single one, whether it be a love comment, a question, or a hate comment. Believe it or not, I responded to every single comment I've had on this channel. I always say thanks for watching. Every single comment, I say thanks for watching because I appreciate everybody that takes the time to watch my video, whether you skip through the video, whether you, you know, scroll through the video, whether you put the video on in the background and you go watch this, honey. Thank you for watching my videos because you're getting my stats up, period. I have a huge list of reaction videos that I need to do. Every single time somebody says, can you react to this? Can you react to that? Can you do this? Can you do that? I write it down and I take it to account every single time because my subscribers or my potential subscribers mean the world to me. You guys mean the world to me, believe it or not. Try to reply to as many comments as you can and take the feedback and advice that they give you seriously because they're the ones watching. Nobody else is going to watch you but them. You can't watch yourself because you're only one subscriber unless you're gonna make a bunch of catfish accounts and then subscribe to yourself, but that's just weird. Let's be honest. The second tip is to interact with other YouTubers and make comments on their videos. I personally, I do this a lot. I'm very active in the YouTube space. A lot of big YouTubers, a lot of small YouTubers that comment on their videos and I watch their videos. And me personally, I'm not against promoting channels in the comments, but what I'm not about to do is the sub for sub because the sub for sub comments, they're just overdone. They're annoying to be quite honest. It shows nothing. They're spam comments, basically. If you're gonna promote your channel in my comments, which I'm totally fine with, just show me that you watched the video. Say, I agree with this, or I don't agree with that, or I think this was a great video. I love when you did this. I, and then segue into, I also did a video on this. Check it out on my channel. That makes it as if like, you actually watch the videos. And I check out the videos every single time because it's much more respectful than a sub for sub, which you're probably just going around on random people's videos and spamming and not even watching a video at all. And my last and final tip is to collab with other YouTubers if possible. Collabing not only makes friends, but it also opens you up to a new audience, which is the person that you're collabing with audience. Depending on how many subscribers you got, there can really be a large number of subscribers if your content resonates with their audience. I'm against the whole collab with people who are in your niche because anybody can find inspiration or anybody can find entertainment in somebody else. A person who has a slime video on YouTube can be interesting to people who 
follow punk rockers on YouTube or interesting to people who follow car aficionados on YouTube. So the whole thing about finding somebody in your niche, I think is overplayed. Collab with people that you think are interesting, that people that you think could be your friends or people that you think their audience has some stake in what you have to offer. YouTube is a very hard thing to do and a majority of us start from zero subscribers. And there will definitely be times where you're discouraged or you feel that times are trying and you feel like you're not moving or you're not, you know, hitting the marks that you want to hit for yourself, whether it be subscriber count or video views, but just keep on going. Hard work and dedication will always pay off. If you have friends in real life, then you can have a YouTube channel because YouTube is basically an extended friend group. On here, people either like your personality or what you have to offer when it comes to knowledge or entertainment. There's no way that with 7 billion people on this earth, you will not find people that are interested in what you have to say or what you have to spread. Everybody has a place in this space. And when I say that, I sincerely mean it. If you're thinking of starting a YouTube channel, just start it. Just do it. There is nothing that should be holding you back because I'm sure you'll find people who find you interesting and I'm sure you'll find people who love what you have to offer. But that is all for this video, guys. Make sure you like this video. Give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon for notifications for when I post. I post every week. Not every two weeks. Not every three weeks. Every seven days or less, honey. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, honeys.